There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Hey, Magellan, how about a progress report? Coming up, Skipper. We'll be about four minutes behind flight plan at 30 degrees west. That all? I can pick up four minutes easy, Hatch, with or without the jet stream. That's what I like to hear, Captain. Early ETA. Leave it to Captain Farber, Craig, when you've flown as long as he has. Captain? Yes, Wyatt? Gander wants to know if you intend an altitude change after we pass 30 west. How are the numbers? Got them right here. Look okay, Purcell? Check. Here you go, Captain. Thank you, Mr. Purcell. All right, then. Gentlemen, you'll be pleased to know that thanks to the quality of this aircraft, the fine weather, and my brilliant flying, we'll hit JFK ahead of schedule, as long as the speed holds up. Send it in, Wyatt. Yes, sir. Shannon, Shannon, copy Gander. Transocean Flight 33, position 50 north, 30 west, time 1403, flight level 35,000, estimating 52 north, 40 west, and 2431, Estimating 52 north, 40 west, and 2431. Estimating JFK 1830, endurance 79560. Report received, Skipper. Hey, Jamie. Boys. How are we doing back there? Oh, the passengers are very content. But on behalf of the flight attendants, we have one respectful request. That you get us to the Big Apple as soon as possible. One's going to the opera. Opera? And three in first class have heavy dates. And a fourth, well, she just might be free for dinner with a polite and single crew member, assuming there's anyone like that on board. Hold it a minute. What is it, Captain? Did you feel anything? Feel? What do you mean, Skipper? I don't know. Thought I felt something. Something funny. Like a sensation of speed. I can't put my finger on it. Guess it's my bones. I must be getting old. True airspeed 440, Skipper. We're level. Do you suppose we picked up a tailwind? Maybe. Those jet streams are tricky, but it's that... the crazy feeling I can't shake. You can't feel a tailwind. But I feel something. Checking the instruments. Everything looks fine. Magellan, give us a speed check with your Loran. Right. I'd better do it again. What's going on? Skipper, Loran indicates a ground speed of 830 knots. I've never heard of a tailwind like that. Check it again. Wyatt, see if you can raise OSV Charlie, air defense radar. Ask them to give us a fix and check our ground speed. Magellan, you sure about the Loran? Skipper, I'm not only sure, but we're still accelerating. 980 now? 1120? 1500? God in heaven, I can't keep up with it. Wyatt, anything from air defense? No, sir. 2100. I hope the wings stay on. They will. Don't worry about the wings. Just watch that true airspeed. Ground speed means nothing. We must be in one lulu of a jet stream. Magellan, my needle just reversed on Gander Omni. How could we get past Gander? Give me a fast position check. Skipper, we are past Gander. We must be doing 3,000 knots. Try to raise Harmon control. If you can't, try Moncton or Boston. At this speed, you might as well try Kennedy. Transocean 33, Harmon control. Come in, please. Harmon, please acknowledge. Transocean 33, Moncton. Transocean 33, Boston Control. Come in, please. Transocean 33 to Kennedy Control. Can you hear us, please? No soap. I can't raise anyone. You're riding on a jet airliner en route from London to New York. You're at 35,000 feet atop an overcast and roughly 55 minutes from John F. Kennedy Airport. But what you're witnessing inside the cockpit of this plane is no reflection on the aircraft or crew. It's a safe, well-engineered, perfectly designed machine. And the personnel you've just met are a trained, cool, highly efficient team. The problem is simply that the plane is going too fast, and there is nothing within the realm of knowledge or logic to explain it. Unbeknownst to passengers and crew, Flight 33's Odyssey will carry it to an uncharted region well off the beaten track of commercial travelers. For you see, 
It's moving at record speed now and heading straight into the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Odyssey of Flight 33, starring Daniel J. Travante, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. What is going on up there? We're a little behind schedule. The captain's trying to pick up a few minutes' flight time. Well, he's going to pick up more than that. If he doesn't ease off, we're going to set a new transatlantic record. Help me, will you, Paula? Well, sure, but... Get the beverage cart ready. Again? Yes, again. But it's going to roll all over the place. If it does, you'll just have to lock the wheels. Well, maybe we should wait. For what? Well, <laughs> till the captain turns off the seatbelt sign. He hasn't turned it on yet. Well, why not? He's got other things on his mind. Like? Do as I say. Please. Oh, okay, Jane. Uh, just the beverage service? And peanuts. Got it. I guess you must have told them. What? delivered my message to the Flyboys. I've got eight o'clock tickets for the Met tonight, the ride of the Valkyrie. Uh, I told them. Oh, thanks. I've always had a thing about Valhalla. Looks like I'm going to make the curtain after all. Come with me for a minute. Where? Back here, where it's private. We have to talk. About? In the galley. Listen to those engines. Oh, maybe you shouldn't have said anything. The guys are really showing off. They are showing off, aren't they? Let me put it to you this way. I just hope the Valhalla you're talking about is strictly at the Metropolitan Opera on 7th Avenue and 57th Street in little old New York and... and not the real thing. Are we in trouble? Paula. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, we Listen are. Listen to me. Oh, how bad. They don't know yet. That's the truth. Is... is the cart full? Oh, yes, but... Go ahead and begin serving. Just like that? Coffee, tea, or milk with a smile. Oh, I should have gone to acting school. You can do it. I'll be right there with you. You know, you talk about ailments. I don't believe I was, actually. I had an aunt once in Boise, Idaho, who had one of the worst livers in the history of the state. When that woman passed on, rest her soul, would you believe it? What, pray tell? There were five medical associations bidding just to put her liver on display in a bottle. But her mother, that's my father's sister, she absolutely refused to let them show it. And it's like I always said to my late husband... What did you say you were in the Air Force? RAF, madam. A captain. I'm now a military attaché at our British embassy in Los Angeles. A nephew of mine was in the Navy. He was on a cruiser or a PT boat or something. Or was it a battleship? I say, did you feel anything? Well, it was a little queasy when we took off, but my late husband used to say that I had a stomach like a... That's odd. A lot of people have queasy stomachs. I have what they call... Quite odd, really. I had a distinct sensation of rapid acceleration, I should say. Well, here we are. This train is for you, ma'am, and and this one is... Got a case of the nerves, miss? Oh, I'm... I'm meeting someone in New York. My, my boyfriend, I... I don't want to be late, so I'm kind of, you know, nervous. <laughs> one lucky fella, that's all I can say. You got another one of those cute little trays for me? Um, I just ran out. Well, I see one more underneath. Well, I, I have to go back to the galley. Excuse me. Repeat, Transocean 33. Anybody. What about it, Wyatt? <sighs> Not a thing, sir. Either they're off whack... Everybody out there, or, or we are. Check your equipment again. I've checked it four times. Knock it off. We'll just have to bullet through and see if anything... Did we hit something? Check for damage. What was that flash? Did we get hit by lightning? Numbers three and four are still on the wing. They look okay. I can see one and two. Everything seems to be in one piece. Purcell. Yes, sir. Go aft and check for any cabin damage. Report back as fast as you can. I'll get on the horn and calm everybody down. That light, that crazy light, and all the shaking. Turbulence? I doubt it. It's more like a shock wave. As if we'd gone past the speed of sound. You mean we hit Mach 1? We broke the sound barrier? We didn't get any Mach 1 warning. We probably wouldn't. Not with a true airspeed of only 440. 
Magellan's last speed fix showed 3,000 knots. We could have broken some kind of barrier, but not any I've ever heard of. Magellan, can you give me a Loran fix now? Whatever that bump was, Skipper, it knocked out everything. Loran's inoperative. Altimeter and rate of climb steady. Skipper, I still can't raise Gander or Moncton or Boston. Either they're off the air or, or we are, or both. Hatch, give me a sun fix. I'll need a heading from JFK for my last known position. If we can't raise anybody, we'll have to go down and establish visual contact. Skipper, we can't do that. We leave this altitude and we'll land smack in the middle of 20 other flights. Sooner or later, we're going to have to find a landmark or go VFR. With no radio contact, we're like a deaf and dumb man. As long as we stay up here, we're even worse off. We're also blind. No damage aft, Skipper. Everybody's, well, scared. Ours not to reason why. Into the Valley of Public Relations, hand me the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Farber speaking. I want to assure you that everything is under control and that there is no danger. What a relief. The captain knows what he's doing. You think we're going to be late? I have a connecting flight. Oh, thank God. We encountered a little clear air turbulence back there, along with some kind of atmospheric phenomenon. Yes, I need another glass of juice. I spilled mine. Yes, of course. I just got this dress for the trip, and now... Dear lady, will you kindly listen to the captain? There's been no damage to the aircraft except for some temporary malfunction of our radio. We'll have that fixed in no time. Is it true? Paula, would you get the lady a new glass of juice, please? I repeat, there's no cause for alarm. We'll keep you posted. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the flight. Answer me, will you? Is what he said true or not? That should hold them. For now, maybe, but don't bet on it. If we run according to schedule, we should be landing at Kennedy inside of the next 40 minutes. Until then, please keep your seatbelts fastened as a precaution. Remember, our flight attendants are at your service. Purcell, what's our fuel? 29,435 pounds. Hmm. With the Loran out, I don't know what our ground speed is. But I've got a hunch we left that tailwind. I don't have the feeling of acceleration anymore. Magellan, how about that heading to JFK? Well, part of this is scientific, Skipper, and part of it's Kentucky windage. Try 262. That's as close as I can make it. 262 it is. All right, gentlemen, you know what we're up against. We're apparently out of touch with all ground radar points. We don't even know if we're on an airway. And this 707 is a beast that gulps fuel. All of which means we've got one chance. To go down through this overcast and look for something familiar. You're talking about flying blind. It's very possible, not to say probable, that we may hit something on the way down. But we've got to take that chance or wait up here till we run out of fuel. I just wanted you to know where we stand. Now, everyone keep a sharp lookout for other traffic. And I don't think a few prayers would be out of order. All right, Craig. We're taking her down. Now we're really in that fog bank. Can't see a blessed thing. Wait. There. What is... Skipper. I see it. And? I don't get it. It happens to be a fact, though. That's Manhattan Island down there. How could it be? Looks more like the middle of the Amazon jungle to me. Where's the skyline? Where are all the buildings? I don't know where they are, but we're over New York City. There's only one small item that's a little amiss here. The passengers are confused. We're over land, but they don't see any... Any what, Janie? Well, and any buildings, or bridges, or highways, or... Nothing but trees, some stretches of grassland, and more trees. It's the right shape, but it can't be New York. Oh, that's Manhattan down there. See? There's the East River and the Hudson River. Uh, sure looks like it. There's Montauk Point and every other topographical clue we need. The real estate's there. It's just that the city and eight million people seem to be missing. There isn't any New York City. It's disappeared. Come on, boys. You're joking, right? Skipper, verify something for me, would you? And in a hurry. Look, it's just not possible. The bringer of thunder. What? Down there, right below us, in the middle of all that foliage. You see it moving? All I see is a jungle. That, that thing there, the one that just pulled up a tree like a toothpick and ate the top off of it. 
I've seen them in picture books. That's a brontosaurus. Been extinct for, oh, say, 150 million years. That, my friends, is the largest dinosaur that ever walked the Earth. Here's that sandwich and some extra cookies for the boy. Oh, why, thank you. Oh, what is your name? It's Jane. Well, Jane, when we land all safe and secure, I am going to write a letter to Transocean Airlines and tell them how nice you were to everyone on board. That's very kind of you, but it's not necessary. I'm only doing my job. Oh, more than that, much more. You remind me so much of my daughter-in-law. She's a nurse and... Miss? Yes? Uh... You got a drink on that cart. Of course, sir. Would you care for coffee, tea, a soda? <laughs> no, ma'am. I mean a drink. Drink. Anything you like. Scotch, rocks? Certainly. Yeah. Make it a double. All right. How much of you? Nothing, sir. You sure? I mean, this ain't first class. It's on the house. Everything's on the house today. Here, I'm giving you two drinks. Two doubles. <laughs> well, how come? Because you've been such a perfect passenger. We'll be landing soon. <laughs> Not that soon. I don't see the city yet. You should buckle up anyway. Yeah, sure. Hey, you know what? You're all right. You know that? We're all all right. Isn't that great? So what's the score? I mean, we've been circling for five minutes now. They said they'd let us know not to come in. Well, that sounds promising. Doesn't it? At least we're back to normal speed. That's something. Something. Captain Farver's a pro. So's the rest of the crew. Yes, they are. Definitely. So there's no reason to panic. No reason at all. We just go on like a normal, ordinary flight. Okay. Got it. <laughs> so, um, shall I go help out in first class for a while? In a minute. I need you to do something else first. What? Pick out a couple of those little vodka bottles. Sure. What passenger? I want you to hand them to me. What are you doing? Rocks are with a mixer. Are you serious? We're on duty. Then I'll drink them myself. Wait. What is really going on? I promise you, if I knew, I'd tell you. But you know something, don't you? When I was in the cockpit, I thought I saw... Oh, Paula, did you happen to look out a window a few minutes ago, right after we leveled off? Why? What did I miss? They were all looking down, and I looked with them. I wish I hadn't, but I did. Oh, is it one of the engines? It's not the aircraft. Well, then what? That's the trouble, Paula. I don't know. I give you my word, I really, truly don't know. Excuse me, ladies. I'm sorry, sir, but this area's off limits. I know, but you'll see... If you are looking for the restroom, it is at the other end of the aisle. No, no, you see, it's just that... Are you quite sure your pilot knows what he's doing? Absolutely. Captain Farber's the best there is. In that case, why has he announced an arrival at Kennedy when we're nowhere near that location? I'm not blind, you know. I've made this flight many times, a great many times, and I can assure you that wherever we are, this is not New York airspace. There was a last-minute change in the flight plan. The captain's taking an alternate approach. Hmm, for what reason, may I ask? Something about the jet stream. Rubbish. I flew for the RAF. The jet stream occurs at different altitudes, not at widely varying longitudes. Whatever it is you're attempting to cover up... Would you mind taking your seat, sir? I'll tell you young ladies something else. I have a camera in my flight bag, and I've documented this alternative flight plan on two rolls of 35mm film. Whatever ideas that cowboy captain of yours may have about unscheduled shortcuts, I'm sure the Federal Aviation Agency will be most interested. Thank you very much, sir. I'll pass it along. <sighs> I wonder what else he got pictures of. What? Nothing, Paula. Cheers. What do you think now, Skipper? Well, we've flown over what should be Schenectady, Albany, and points north. That's what you and Craig keep saying, but personally, I don't get it. Take a look. There's the topography. 
You can make out the coastline, the mountain ranges? But it's not any New York State I've ever seen, and neither have you. Admit it, Captain. It looks like some kind of forest land, and it just goes on and on. And there's still no sign of life. Except for that thing with the long neck and the teeth. From here, I made it to be about five stories tall. It was a brontosaurus, no doubt about it. Listen to you. Listen to us all like it was something people see every day. Nobody's seen anything like that for a hundred million years. Longer than that. So here we are, talking away like rational human beings. Craig. Yes, Captain? Ever hear of Occam's razor? That rings a bell. Don't tell me. Is it what we're going to hit next? Wait a minute. I think I remember. From science class. He, he, he was a mathematician. Right. He came up with a principle, a way of thinking. Which is? In a nutshell, it was this. When you look for a scientific explanation, say for something that doesn't seem to have an explanation right off, you should go for the simplest answer that accounts for everything. All right. I got it. This is all a dream. I'm dreaming. I'm in a hotel room in New York with a big soft bed. I'm going to wake up any second now. Or you can't wake up, because, see, you're already dead. You died in your sleep. We all did. We just don't know it. You're not listening. I said the simplest answer that accounts for all the facts. That means everything that's happened. There is no way to account for it. All right. What if I said we were swallowed by a whale like Jonah? Would you buy that? No, because whales live in the ocean, not the air. Unless we already crashed in the Atlantic and didn't notice. Pretty big thing not to notice. Exactly. Or could we say we've been swallowed by a flying saucer? And this isn't even the Earth anymore. Flying saucers don't have throttles and altimeters and 400 people in the cabin. And flight attendants like Janie. How do you know? Been on one before? Now you're catching on. Those aren't the simplest answers. You don't buy those theories any more than I do, because they're too much of a stretch, an unnecessary one. It's always possible that they could turn out to be true, but why make such a big jump? You see what I mean? Captain, I'm not real big on science fiction. Why are you telling us this? Because I thought about it. And I came up with a theory myself. A surmise based on everything we know. That I'd like to hear, because I'm flat out of answers myself. I'll give you my surmise then, gentlemen. You may want to trust me up with ropes when you hear this. I doubt that, Captain. You got more flight hours than all the rest of us put together. Keep an open mind. It's the only single rational explanation I can come up with to account for everything that's happened so far. Even the special effect monster back there? Even that. All right, let's hear it. Here goes. The bumps, the acceleration, what we saw with our own eyes. All of us, remember. Everything we absolutely know to be true. There isn't any way to explain all that. Isn't there? Take a look at what we've got to work with. Go ahead. Somehow, in some way, we not only broke the speed of sound, we must have broken some other kind of barrier as well. What other kind is there? We've gone back. To? Back in time. And you're telling me that's rational? Think about it, all of you. And then tell me if you can come up with an alternative. If you can, I'd like to hear it. <sighs> okay, okay. Just for the sake of argument. Say you're right. Where does that leave us, Skipper? And what are we supposed to do about it? Skipper, fuel is down to 19,000 pounds. That's about what I estimated. Not much. You know, I've stared at these instruments till I know every number by heart, but it doesn't do me any good. Because without a theory to act on, nothing changes. All this is still impossible. And the clock is ticking. And we're stuck up here, waiting for radio contact or visual confirmation till hell freezes over or we run out of fuel. And guess which one happens first? At which point we set this baby down in adventure land, without enough clear ground to stop. And we break in half. So, let me get this straight. What you're saying is... What I'm saying is, when you don't have anything else to fall back on, pick the best damn theory you have and act on it. Because that's the only chance you have, even if it's a slim one. Not exactly good science. Too many unknowns. But, when the choice is between slim and none... So what do we do about it? We rev this baby up till she's going as fast as she can. We climb until we hit that jet stream, and then we try to follow the same flight plan, and I mean exactly, and go back to where we came from. Is that all? Our instruments are functional. 
The only thing that's wrong with the radio on the Loran is that nobody's down there to hear us or send up a signal. It's a long shot. It's the only shot. You got a better one? No, sir. Then let's do it. 700 knots. 780 knots. 800. 900 knots. Skipper, I don't know if we're going to make it. Throttle forward. What are you doing in here? Hang on, Janie. Whatever you're doing, stop before you kill us all. What was it? And a flash of light, Captain. Just like before. Look, I know you've got your hands full, but somebody get on the pipe. I have at least three passengers close to hysteria. Skipper, and... we made it. We're back. Look! What? There she is. Where? I can't... Over here. You know, I never thought the Empire State Building was that great, if you want to know the truth. Is that it? Yes. Yes, it is. But right now, it looks downright beautiful. Don't you think so, Captain? Where's the mic? Right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Farber. We had some momentary difficulty back there. See, we're now over in New York. We should be landing in just a few minutes. Thank you all for bearing with us. Bravo! He did it. I haven't prayed since. Down on my knees and things. Hey, look, the Statue of Liberty, it's right down there. Ah, kiss the ground. Oh, may I must have dozed off. Did I miss anything? In a word, madam, dear, dear lady. Yes. Well, sometimes I just have to rest my eyes for a second or two. You know how it is. Quite. These seats are awfully uncomfortable, though, right in the small of my back. My doctor said I should never sit in one position for this long. He told me, next time I won't fly, I'll take the train. Miss, you never brought me an extra pillow like I asked. Didn't you hear me? I distinctly remember saying... Here, ma'am, take all the pillows you want. How about Kennedy? Nothing doing. Our VHF is still out. Maybe Kennedy's is, too. Try high frequency. I did already, Skipper. Nothing from JFK. How about LaGuardia? Keep using high frequency. Somebody should hear us. LaGuardia, this is Transocean 33. LaGuardia, Transocean 33. This is LaGuardia. Yay! Yay! Oh, thank God. The boys had me going there for a while. Oh, I want to take a hot bath, then sleep for 12 straight hours. Oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, no. Are you on turnaround? Oh, no, it's not that. I thought you had your layover back at Heathrow. I did. Yes, these time zones. I set my clock for London time, but I wake up on Eastern Standard. You ever try to order breakfast in the middle of the night? You get used to it. I know. Catch your Z's whenever you can. But a couple hours in the lounge just... I just you cut it. Not for me. There's always the taxi ride to the airport. <laughs> That's good for a little shot eye. Oh, 30 minutes in the backseat of a taxi in traffic? I don't know how you do it. I really don't. Sounds like they stuck you with a rookie schedule, Paula. I'll talk to Lynn at the hub office. She'll do something about it. That would be great. This kind of thing. I didn't know if I could handle it. You did fine. <laughs> they didn't cover this in training. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Has it happened before? Believe me, no. And it won't happen again. Should I collect the trays now? Hmm, I don't know what the captain will say about this. But I'm going to break out the champagne splits for everybody. Wyatt, try for radio contact. Yes, sir. This is Transocean 33, LaGuardia. We're on the northeast leg of the LaGuardia range, and both our ILS and VOR appear inoperative. Uh, request radar vector to JFK ILS. Nothing, sir. Keep trying. Transocean 33, LaGuardia. What are you, wise guy? You like what? 
I got a live one. Yes! All right! Uh, <laughs> a radar vector to Kennedy ILS. Can you do that little thing for me, LaGuardia? If it's not too much trouble, because you'll never, ever know how good your voice sounds to me right about now. What fly did you say this was? Transocean 33. What's the matter? Come on, LaGuardia, quit fooling around. We're low on fuel. Transocean Airlines? What kind of aircraft is this? This is Transocean 33, a Boeing 707. You heard of that? Did you say a Boeing 247? Let me handle it. Be my guest. This guy's a hard case. LaGuardia, this is a Boeing 707. Don't give us any of this 247 jazz. You're a few decades behind the times. This is a 707, LaGuardia. A jet. Four big, lovely Pratt Whitney turbines. Only they're getting hungry. We're low on fuel, and all we want is a radar vector to Kennedy. Now, do you have us in radar contact, or don't you? I don't know who you guys are, but we don't know anything at all about radar or jets or anything else like that. But if you're really low on fuel, we'll clear you to land here. Well, aren't you the generous one? Hey, don't go to any trouble on our account. Captain, the approach chart says their longest runway is less than 5,000 feet. Should we take a chance? Transocean 33, you're cleared to land on runway 22. Altimeter 2988, wind southward 10 miles per hour. The captain is to report to the CAA office immediately after landing. Roger, we'll stay in touch. CAA? Why, well, they haven't called the Federal Aviation Agency the CAA in more years than I've been flying. What do you want to do? All right, Craig, we're bringing her down. If you say so. It'll be like landing in a phone booth, but... Captain, circle again, will you? Why, something wrong? Take a look. What is it, Hatch? What are you... Still New York, all right. Will you take a good look? What are those two structures? Where? Those buildings right under us. Skipper, do you know what they are? Do you? I know exactly what they are. The Trilon and Perisphere. The who? I saw an old newsreel about it. They built it all and tore it down a long time ago before I was born. But there's no doubt. That's the New York World's Fair. The 65 World's Fair? They must have left some of it standing. Funny, I never noticed it before. Not the 1965 fair, the one before that. But that was in 1939. I know they tore that one down. They did. So that... that means we're in... We're in 1939. We came back. We did it. We came back. But dear God, we didn't come back far enough. We can't land. We can't land at LaGuardia, not in 1939. We've got to try again. What about the passengers? I think we'd better let them in on it. What choice do we have? We owe them the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. What I'm about to tell you is something I can't explain very well. Your crew is as perplexed about it as you are. But if you look out on the left-hand side of this aircraft, you'll see directly below you an area that was once called Lake Success. And those buildings down there aren't the United Nations. They happen to be... What is he talking about? Shh, listen. They happen to be the New York World's Fair. That man's gone crazy. He shouldn't be flying an airplane. Madam, would you kindly not? What I'm trying to tell you is that somehow, some way, in some manner, this aircraft has gone back in time. And it's 1939. We're going to try to increase our speed and go through the sound barrier. Or time barrier, whatever it is. The same as we've already done twice before. I don't know if I can do it. I don't even know that we have enough fuel, but I ask you to remain calm and pray. A trans-ocean jet airliner en route from London to New York on a recent uneventful June afternoon, but now reported overdue and missing, and searched for on land and sea and in the air by anguished human beings, fearful of what they'll find. But you and I know where she is. You and I know what's happened. So if at some moment, any moment, you hear the sound of jet engines flying atop the overcast, engines that sound searching and lost, engines that sound desperate, shoot up a flare or do something, anything that might help the men and women aboard Transocean 33, all of them still trying to get home 
from the Twilight Zone. We'll return to the Twilight Zone in a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop TwilightZoneRadio.com. Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. Odyssey of Flight 33, starring Daniel J. Travanti, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling and adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison. Heard in the cast were Taylor Miller, Peter DeFaria, Richard Hensel, Turk Muller, Doug James, Peggy Roter, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, Vince Amari, and Roderick Peoples. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Paul Patch, Terry Jennings, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.